Hey there! I'm Elizabeth Pinio, and my pronouns are she, her. Today, we'll be talking about how to access the Grove Music Online Database, which is part of Oxford Music Online through the University of Maryland College Park Library website. Grove Music Online is like a big dictionary of music-related terms, concepts, and ideas, and every entry in it is written by a music scholar, so you can trust its contents. It's a really useful resource for musicians, or anyone who needs an introduction to a musical concept. Let's get started! By the end of this video, you'll be able to access the Grove Music online database from the University of Maryland College Park library website in order to conduct searches on it. This is a great place to start your research, especially if you don't know much about your research topic. Let's start at the homepage of the University of Maryland College Park website. I happen to have it bookmarked, but you can access it by navigating to lib.umd.edu. From there, you can scroll down to the main search box and enter Oxford Music Online. We're searching Oxford Music Online instead of Grove Music Online because the Grove Music Online database is part of the larger Oxford Music Online system, which has two other music databases in it, the Oxford Companion to Music and the Oxford Dictionary of Music. It's a quirk of the system, but as of 2022, searching Oxford Music Online is actually the quickest way to get to Grove Music Online. Okay, so go ahead and hit search. Wait for it to load up, then head over to the Databases box. This first result here is the one we want, Oxford Music Online. So we'll give that a click. And at this point, you might need to log in with your University of Maryland credentials, but it looks like it's letting me pass without doing that this time. And now we're on the Grove Music Online homepage. From here, we can begin thinking about how we might want to conduct our search. You can see here that we have a bunch of different options at the top of the screen. We have our usual keyword search box, but we also have these topic, instrument, era, region, place type, and occupation search options. So at this point, you're going to need to decide whether you want to jump right to a keyword search, or if you want to try a topic, instrument, era, region, place type, or occupation search. Each of these have different strengths. For instance, if you're researching a particular instrument, say the hurdy-gurdy, you'll probably want to start by doing an instrument search for the hurdy-gurdy, rather than a keyword search. This is because an instrument search is going to pull all the records tagged with hurdy-gurdy, making it a more systematic, thorough search, whereas a keyword search is going to look for any record that mentions the hurdy-gurdy so you might get results that just mention it in passing, but aren't actually about the hurdy-gurdy. Using the instrument search will be like getting a curated set of results specifically for your search topic. Let's also quickly look at the region and place type search types. If we just look at them by name, they might seem pretty similar. After all, isn't a region a type of place? In the Grove Music Online system, Region refers to large hunks of land, like a continent. You can see when I hover over it with my mouse, we have options like Africa, Asia, and Europe. Now, if we hover over place type, you'll see that we also have the option to use region. This region option is the same as the region option we just saw. This is just another way to access it, because, like we said earlier, a region is a type of place. But we also have other options here that are more specific than continent-level swaths of land, like city, country, site, or state. Site here refers to a specific famous location, like the Apollo Theater, the Cotton Club, or Bristol, England. Both of these search types could be useful in different ways. For instance, if you wanted to know how the hurdy-gurdy was used in a specific town, you might want to start out with a place type search. But if you wanted to know how the hurdy-gurdy was used in Europe, you might want to start out with region search. Alternatively, you might want to find out how the hurdy-gurdy was used in a specific time period, so you'd want to use the era search. 
or if you wanted to know how the hurdy-gurdy was used by people with specific jobs, you'd want to use the occupation search. Finally, I've saved the topic search for last because it's deceptively simple. It presents you with a list of perspectives from which you can explore the topic of music. This doesn't necessarily mean that it presents you with different perspectives on your topic. For instance, the category Music and Law gives you articles on the legal aspects of music, while Ethnomusicology gives you articles on music and culture. This search type is best for developing a base understanding of the field in which you're conducting your research, rather than your research topic itself. For instance, if you were researching the hurdy-gurdy, you might want to go to the Musicology and Music History section and read some articles on how musicologists or music historians conduct their work so that you could best understand how to go about your own research. After you decide what type of search you want to do, you can decide how you want to limit your results. For instance, if you're looking for images of a hurdy-gurdy instead of articles about one, you might want to select the image limiter. Or if you're looking for resources from a particular time period, you might want to select an era limiter or two. These limiters are incredibly useful tools that can really cut down the number of results you have to sift through while conducting the initial stages of research which is really helpful while you're narrowing in on a particular approach to your research topic. But you also want to be careful about applying too many of them too quickly, because sometimes a great source falls just outside of what you think of as your limits. My recommendation is to apply them one at a time, assess your new results, then decide if you want to continue limiting them. If you run into challenges or if you find that you need more advanced search features, you can use the help features available on Grove Music Online's website. Those links are available in the Tools and Resources section of the website. Okay, as a summary of the process we've just gone through, this slide gives a visual representation of the path from the library homepage to the Grove Music Online homepage. Then it branches into a few of the options you'll have once you arrive there like the topic, instrument, era, region, place type, occupation, and keyword searches, and the limiters. Now that you know how to get to the Grove Music Online database, let's talk about the exercise you're going to do. In order to practice the skills we've learned, you're each going to start from the library homepage and navigate to Grove Music Online on your own. Then you're going to conduct your own search on a topic of your own choice using whatever type of search or limiters you think you need. The goal of this activity is to help us achieve our learning outcome. By the end of this video, you'll be able to access the Grove Music online database from the University of Maryland College Park library website in order to conduct searches on it. Getting some practice doing this with this activity will help you achieve our learning outcome. You might also have noticed that on this activity slide, the fourth item is use help features. That's because I'm encouraging you to use Grove Music Online's built-in help features before asking me or one of the other librarians for help in order to strengthen your problem-solving skills within the Grove Music Online ecosystem. This will help you to familiarize yourself with Grove Music Online's website, as well as help you to develop your problem-solving skills, which, in turn, will help you to strengthen your overall research skills. Now, obviously, I'm not telling you not to ask for help. If you need it, ask, and we will help you. With all that being said, feel free to go ahead and get started, and best of luck with your activity. Again, I'm Elizabeth Pinio, and with any questions, concerns, or confusions, I can be reached at the University of Maryland by email at epinio. That's E-P-I-N-E-O at umd.edu. Thank you again for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day.